My name is John. I will be, oh, and my wife said take the hat off of the presentation, so I am taking that. I originally had my Yankees hat on. She's like, you don't want people hating you before you even start speaking. But so uh, any Dodger fans out there, truly heartbroken for you because I wanted Yankees versus Dodgers World Series. I thought that would be awesome. But now we have to get past Houston. Everyone has their problems, right? So um, I'll leave this slide up there for a second. Uh, if you want to try to go grab the slides, if you want to download them. I think that's going to still rotate through anyway. Um, but uh, if anyone is successful in downloading those, let me know. Um, it's going to go there in a second. I was, uh, there we go. But uh, so anyway, uh, you know what? Just stay there, John. I was, so you know how long it took me to get the uh, that slideshow thing to work last night? <laughs> it should have done more. should have done more time. Um, so let's see. We're here to talk about... Uh, how to get into the cybersecurity career. Uh, how many people are actually working in some sort of cybersecurity job right now? All right, a few of you. How many people are in some type of technical field? Is there anyone who's in a non-technical field but still wants to get over into there? Okay, there is hope. There, uh, leave, out, no. Uh, no, there is definitely hope for you, so good. I'm glad we got one. Got one of my students in here, the awesome Anna. Hi, Anna. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I did you, Rex, I apologize. I did not see you there. So I got two awesome students. I was just about to say my best student, but now <laughs> awkward. So let's just get right into this presentation. Uh, we're a nice small intimate group freezing together. So we can uh, you know just shout out if you have any questions as we go along. We will power this out. So uh, originally uh, I've been doing this presentation a few times. Uh, I think uh, first I did it for my employer, Boeing, and then I did it for ShellCon last year. I've done it at Layer One. Uh, I've done it at some uh, community colleges. So this is becoming my, my thing to, uh, when I became a community college teacher, I didn't expect I would have such an effect on helping people get jobs. And it's really been exciting to help people uh, write letters of recommendation, uh, connect them to recruiters, see them you know, advance. Malia, if you haven't met Malia walking around here, she has just been the poster child of success in the cybersecurity field. Um, so let's go and talk about it. Oh, hey, let's talk about me. Uh, so I like to uh, let you know like the important thing. So uh, amazingly, my wife was reviewing my slides. She goes, why am I in there? I'm like, how else am I gonna prove that I am actually married? Uh, so I was in the Navy 28 years, any veterans? No veterans? Ah. Okay, uh, big Star Trek fan. So I had my picture taken with uh, William Chatner a few years ago. That is actually on my profile at work. And so when I come up, people are like, who is that picture in your email? Is that your dad? Because like the picture is so small, they can't tell. I'm like, that's my friend, Bill. And then uh, this is me at one of the Comic Cons. And I say, I had my picture taken with Slimer because I wanted to be in a picture with someone whose teeth were actually worse than mine. So, um, you know, I've been doing, uh, uh, started off as a software developer a million years ago, system administration, finally became a security guy. A um, bunch of certifications. We'll talk about that later. Um, I teach at Long Beach City College. That's where Rex and Anna know me from. And uh, because I have an addiction to education, I'm actually going for a master's degree right now with, with Sam. So uh, here's a list of our topics that we'll be talking about. So let's start off with some definitions, right? Because everybody thinks we know what something means and then we kind of have a different definition. Uh, there's two definitions of cyber care cybersecurity that I picked out, but I'd like to bet the bottom one for what we're talking about here. Measures taken to protect a computer or computer system against unauthorized access or attack, right? Because that's like the basic nugget of it, right? Cybersecurity. And it's been a lot of different terms over the years. Uh, back in the day, it started off with computer security, and then they had to abbreviate, so it was CompSec. Uh, then it became information security, because while it's not so much the computer as it is the information on it that we really care about, right? The laptop gets stolen, well, that stinks, but we can go out and buy another laptop. If we've got our photos on there or important documents and we haven't been backing them up, then, then it's that information that we really care about. Then it became information assurance, right? Because it's not just the, you know, the security of it, it's like all the different protections of it. And then someone said, that's kind of an old term. Now we need to go to cybersecurity. So if you want to get funding for anything today, put cyber in it, right? That's the, that's the current sexy word. I don't know what they're going to come up with next. I'm sure they'll figure something out. But um, uh, so pivoting 
So this is the first time I've used the term pivot to define uh, this talk. But I, I am going to uh, talk out the definition, and I have a reason for it. Pivoting is the exclusive method of using an instance, also known by foothold, to be able to move from place to place inside the compromised network. It uses the first compromised system foothold to allow you, us to compromise other devices and servers that are otherwise inaccessible directly. So now, in hacking, we talk about pivoting, right? You get into that first machine, maybe they left a guest account open, there was just some easy way in, but now we want to go out and find from this machine, where can we go? Where can we pivot to? I want you to think of yourselves as having a foothold in some career. Uh, several of you are already working in cybersecurity or some other technical field. You, you're already an insider. How do you pivot to there? Uh, in your case, how do you pivot uh, uh, your what your background is to something else? Or you know, how do you like? What is the applica applicability of what I do to cyber? And there is, I'm certain, there's something out there. So we'll talk about the word pivoting again later. So first, is there a demand for cybersecurity? Yeah, we know there is. That's why we're all here. Uh, I'm just fortunate that so at one point in the Navy, uh, in the late 90s, I was tasked uh, to uh, do a uh, analyst, a, a, I'm not using my word, an analysis of uh, software content filtering and uh, and AV tools and really stuff that's like really boring and benign today, but back then it was kind of new. Uh, so I, uh, you'll find that this presentation has a lot of links because I want this to be reference material for you. I want you to be able to take this presentation, not just have some pictures and talking points, but links that you can go to for further information. So uh, I put a, a article in there that talks about the, you know, one of the many uh, studies they have out there on the gap in cybersecurity uh, professionals. One of the terms I love here is closing the gap with new collar, right? We've heard of blue collar and, and you know, uh, white collar workers. New collar workers is saying, take your existing workforce, the people already at your company, and train them to do the cyber job. They already understand the company. They already understand what you do. Just put a cyber component to it. So I really like that one. Uh, and then just a couple of other articles on, uh, on defining the cyber field. This one's kind of cool because it shows uh, top ten uh, top ten high pay highest paying cybersecurity jobs, and penetration tester is like around number five. I think pen tester is like the one that people always gravitate to, right? Because that's the one that's uh, Mr. Robot, right? That's the real sexy one. <laughs> there are a lot of other things out there to do, right? But for pen tester, number five on there. Um, and just wanted to try to give you more of an idea that there are so many things out there, right? So just don't think about the guy on a box banging away. There are uh, people who analyze the threat. Question? Or... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. I didn't know people were having trouble seeing it. Okay. Yay. All right. Uh, brief com commercial interruption. So, uh, for exa example, you know, they talk about uh, advanced persistent threats. There are people whose job are to be threat analysts, to look and see what's coming next. What does the company need to defend themselves against? Application security. Any, any developers, web developers, other programmers? Huge, huge field. Application security, right? Because... Uh, I, I, should I put Anna on the spot? Anna, where do I say most vulnerabilities come from? Okay, Anna just broke my heart. Uh, Rex, you want to give it a try? Day one, what do I say? Crappy software, right? Bad software is where it's all coming from. So people wrote the software, sure. Um, half point uh, for, for Rex on that one. But uh, getting developers to understand Here's all the things that, that you need to look for when you're developing the software, right? You don't go and uh, if your building is completely done, it's not the time to go make sure you have a solid foundation. Uh, you know, of course, the cloud, that's a big one out there. But risk management, uh, governance, just the compliance aspect, not necessarily technical, but really important to the cybersecurity field. And I listed out uh, I, from these websites below, I came up with a bunch of different uh, career fields. So a lot of them got security in there, but then we talked about our friend penetration tester. 
forensic examiner. Forensics is another one that's really interesting. If you are good at math, go look into cryptography, right? Because uh, should I put you on the spot again? What do I say about cryptography? Cryptography is hard. That is why it is done improperly all the time. And so if you have a acumen for that, oh, definitely focus yourself on that. But then, you know, there's people who have to do the management of it. Sales, quality insurance, uh, insurance. They are starting to offer uh, cybersecurity insurance to companies, right? How much money are you going to lose during a some type of hack against your company? And in order to give, uh, so we, uh, most of us probably uh, pay for car insurance, right? Thank you if you're going to get the doors. Uh, so we pay for car insurance. And, and what goes into the cost of our car insurance? What kind of car we drive? How long we've we been driving? What's our record? Where do we live? Where do we park that car at night? If you're going to give insurance to someone for cybersecurity, you're going to have to ask questions. What is your cyber hygiene? How well are you taking care of your network? If uh, you we go out and find out you're running Windows XP, uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to want to insure you. But if you're running latest version of Windows and you have uh, regular patch updates going, uh, you know, you're showing you're doing uh, your effort to keep yourself secure. Uh, you're training your your people on how to look for phishing attempts. So, uh, you know, insurance. If someone's working in an insurance company, that could be a uh, a new field. Yep, come on in. So again, uh, some uh, website oops, websites. And what I wanted to point out is I have a couple in there for non-technical people. So. Uh, you know, there is a need. It doesn't just have to be the cyber geeks or the people who know how to take a computer apart to do these jobs. All right, so uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to embarrass myself anymore by putting Anna and Rex on the spot. But uh, so this is uh, from one of our uh, classes, right? This is one of the slides I use in class. Uh, I do reference a book down there because, as one of my teachers said, a properly annotated, uh, properly annotated footnote turns uh, plagiarism into research. So. Uh, do not uh, go buy this book because I put it on a slide. I know someone did. And I said, oh, you really should talk to me. For starters, you get that you can get that book for free on the Long Beach um, Public Library website and probably a lot of other public library websites. Uh, the other thing is it's okay for a class. It's not a great reference book. Uh, but what I want to point out here is when you look at what I want to do in cybersecurity, Keep these three areas in mind. So technical is the one that we always gravitate to. That's the blinking lights, that's the boxes, that's the stuff that people try to sell you. Here, make your network secure. Uh, but administrative, uh, training, policy, uh, governance, those are important. And physical control, right? Uh, how are we protecting our computer assets? Because if the bad guy can walk in and pull out a hard drive out of your server and walk out with it, then all your technical controls don't really matter anymore, right? Except one, Rex, Anna. What's the last? What's the last bastion of protection if someone gets a hold of our computer? Um, full, disk. full disk encryption. Yay! Full points to Rex on that one. Um, so, uh, you know, keep in mind on the stuff that you have a background in. Uh, maybe you were in construction, for example. There are areas that just involve building out secure spaces to meet certain government requirements, right? So uh, that's why we have a lock picking village here. That could be part of your pen testing uh, to go and demonstrate, hey, look, yeah, you've got a great firewall and all that, but your locks are total cheese with, and I can get to your servers anyway. So um, I put this slide up again to show you that there are different areas to be in. Uh, I point out you may already be involved in cybersecurity. A bunch of you raised your hand and said you were. But if you thought you weren't, look at some of the things you could be doing. Um, you know, I, I talked to earlier, I called it crappy software, but poorly implemented software, uh, systems not being administered correctly, uh, just basic design problems, meltdown and spectra, right? That wasn't software, that was just a design, uh, not just, but a design issue. And I, I use the term cyber hygiene. I didn't coin it, but I do like that term, right? Just like uh, we go and wash our hands in there. Uh, are we doing things on a regular basis to keep our, our system secure? All right, so let's get to the point, uh, the things that you're probably going to be interested about. What kind of training can you do to enhance your career or move more into a cybersecurity career? So um, a lot of jobs today still require four-year degrees, right? You go look at the job things. It's not necessarily relevant to what you do, but they 
especially big companies, still have that four-year degree bias. Although I'm starting to see a little bit of a wind of change in that. But uh, it doesn't mean that you need a four-year degree to be have a career in cybersecurity. And if you already had a degree, and let's say it wasn't relevant, directly relevant, maybe you had a, a, you know some type of liberal arts degree or business degree, and you want to get more to the technical side, I'm not. I'm going to state that getting another four-year degree isn't necessarily the way you uh, you want to go. So um, one of the links I have in here is this about a 15-minute long video. It's called "Success in a New Economy," and it's really interesting because it talks about you know. Uh, I think at one point the trades were getting a bad rep, you know, like people going and being plumbers, electricians, you know, oh, you're not going to make as much money as a person who has a four year degree. And, uh, you know, that's not necessarily true because they talk about, well, look at the career path of a successful plumber and maybe a person who's in the business field, but not doing all that stellar. So uh, that that video is really interesting. Uh, then I go on to point out that in Southern California, there are several schools that have the NSA endorsement for uh, Centers for Academic Excellence. Um, the three community colleges are Coastline, Cypress, and Long Beach. And I, even though I teach at Long Beach, I was still, uh, I listed them in the order that the schools received the, their, uh, their accreditation for that. Uh, there's also another college, uh, community college in Northern California. Uh, if you are looking for a four year degree, uh, Cal Poly Pomona, uh, CSU, San Bernardino, uh, UCI, and now the most recent one is Webster University, which I hadn't even heard of until recently. They're down in Irvine, a private university. They just received their four-year endorsement for their bachelor's degree, and they also have a master's degree in cybersecurity. Uh, and then we're going to talk a lot more about certification, but I also want to point out that in addition to the degree, there are certain positions that want specific cybersecurity certifications. And uh, having no uh, CSSP is one of the big ones that you'll see in there. But like the DOD really is a driver for that. So if you're trying to work for any of the big aerospace companies, uh, you know, the Boeings, um, who's left? <laughs> Northrop, right? With all the mergers there, most of them were gone. Uh, aerospace Corporation. But Raytheon, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, but um, you know, there used to be so many more. But um, the... The DOD requirement for certifications has been slowed down to the contractor. But uh, the bullet here, I like, you know, that the, this, I believe that technical training and certifications can, be, can get you into this field faster than another four year degree. In fact, to emphasize that point, uh, we have a student from Cal State Long Beach going for a four year degree. She is at the, she uh, became a part of the Long Beach City Cybersecurity Club because she said there just wasn't enough cybersecurity training in their program, right? So, yes. Okay, so the question is on certifications. Uh, has anyone ever done a CompTIA certification recently that could shout out a price? But, okay, well, but uh, I'm gonna talk to that a little. So it's a good question. Uh, on how much they could cost, on how much these certifications cost. Still cheaper than a four-year degree, right? Even at like your lowest price uh, university. Oh, look at the quality you're getting here. Uh, so, so what he's talking about, and, and what, you know what, so hold that, because we are really going to talk about that. So uh, there are no veterans in the room other than me, so I will skip this slide. If you know any veterans though, please send them this information. And for those of you who are taking pictures, uh, if you're walking a little late, I will show again at the end where you can download these slides. Uh, so on the cer cybersecurity certification. So there are two rather polarized schools of thought and certification, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm getting the laugh back there because the person knows where I'm going with this. But so there are the people go, okay, so there are people like me who just get certification have no idea what they're talking about. Um, no, there are people who just, they collect them, right? They, they just keep on getting certifications. Now, one of the reasons I get so many certifications is because I teach and it helps me with my teaching. Uh, then there are people on the other hand who's like, they have been taking uh, computers apart since infancy. They know this stuff backwards and forwards. They're great. And they're like, I don't need a certification to prove I know what I'm doing, right? But um, the very simple fact is uh, if you went to a doctor's office and you said to the doctor, hey, um, I don't see a degree on the wall. 
and they're like, oh, I didn't actually go to medical school, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. And, you know, I watch a lot of ER. I know what I'm doing. Right? You, want, you, you want some level of confidence that the person had a good day and passed the test, right? Um, so, again, you could just go in and do a comp to you, and you crammed, and you passed the exam, and then you dumped all that knowledge you have to say, right? It doesn't mean that you are, uh, that you, it doesn't really prove that you're qualified, but it proves that you at least went and educated yourself and, and uh, demonstrated some effort. And as I said, there are some places that legally have to have these certifications. Um, and as further proof of that, go onto the different job websites. So I have Dice, Indeed, Monster. Are there any other job sites people are using that I left out? I, I gave up on, uh, on cyber coders. LinkedIn, okay, yeah, you know, I forget that LinkedIn has their own job search. Yeah, so that would have been a good one to put in there. But go search for, uh, you know, look at the jobs, you know, the, so you go and you find a job you're interested in, see if they list any certifications. Then take some of the certifications we're going to be talking about on the subsequent slide and search for them. You'll see which kind of jobs are coming up. All right, so this is going back to what I talked about where I said the DOD and all the big aerospace uh, defense contractors have this, uh, there's requirements that you have to follow. So this is intentionally an eye chart down here. I didn't expect you to be able to read it, but if you go to the link, it will show you that full chart. And basically what this is saying for some of, you know, if you're an auditor, here's the certification, up to if you're management, here are the certification. And from left is like uh, lower level and uh, to the right, more senior. So like uh, CSSP is the top right boss, right? So I always say, if you're Hollywood Squares, you know, I'm up in, the, in, that, in that corner, right above Paul Lynn. Probably no one in this room has ever heard of Paul Lynn, uh, unless you know the, the Weird Al song he wrote. Uh, did he write one? Yeah, I think he did. Um, so uh, uh, you can never go wrong with a Weird Al reference in this crowd, right? So uh, so if you're looking for, if you're either working for any of the big contractors or you're maybe uh, thinking about getting into them, this would be a good link to follow and go read up about this because they have to meet those requirements. CompTIA, Rex, on to your question. So uh, anyone have the security plus? Okay, so we've got one person with security plus. Uh, so these are some of their certifications. Now they have some new one. They have the cybersecurity analyst, right? Because they want to get into the game and have, uh, have uh, you know, cyber, cyber specific one. Uh, the advanced security uh, practitioner, they also have a pen test one. Uh, but then some more generic Linux and cloud. Uh, I have two links in there. One is the CompTIA site itself. It talks about the certification. Uh, the other one is uh, an article that uh, basically went through and, written and divided them between here's their basic ones, here's their ones that are more specific to certain careers. But then I've got a big bullet down there that you could get these certifications at low cost through your friendly community colleges. Because some of the certifications, the colleges actually have certs, and now I'm using the word cert a different way, uh, to pay for the uh, for you to take the certification exam. So you go take a fairly inexpensive course at a community college to help you prepare for it. And then the school may be able to help you with the cost of the certification exam. As opposed to uh, when you did your Security Plus, did you take a training course through them? Okay. All right. So because there are specific prep courses for them and they are not inexpensive they're probably in the in like you know the twelve hundred dollar range the thousand dollar range for for those so i am i am always trying to steer people towards low cost solutions and my students know i'm always trying to get them free stuff right we all love free so um that's comptia now you said you have your cssp too awesome okay so the cssp is the one that really still has a lot of clout that people look for although a little little bit of side of cracks on there um, but the funny thing is I'll have a student come in, you know, and they're like fresh out of high school or something like, I want to get my CSSP because all these jobs want it. Well, at least they're doing some research, but CSP is really the one that you've got to be in the industry for a few years before you can get it. Um, so typically you need five years of experience to get your CSSP. If you have a four year uh, college degree, they'll take one year off. But now to further, you know, make it more available to people. They have their CISSA, the A being associate instead of professional. And you can get, you can pass the exam, say I'm a CSSA, and then try to get a job to help you get the relevant experience so eventually you can uh, upgrade to the CSSP. Um, another uh, 
certification that IFC Square offers that I really like is Certified Secure Software Lifecycle Professional. Remember what I was telling you about crappy software and the need for people to be able to do application security? The CFS LP is an application security certification. So I really like that one. They also have others like in cloud and forensics and medical. So I don't know that those ones have as much of the reputation. Yes, sir. Well, excellent question. So they have their domains. I list them in here somewhere, I think, or maybe not. So um, I forgot how many domains they have. And your work as a software developer can certainly qualify for at least one of the domains. Remember how many domains there are? Eight. Eight, because eight, it's still, I'm old. I'm old. When, when we had it, damn it, there was 10 domains. Uh, yeah, so they, thank you. So there's eight domains now. But uh, for example, uh, one of my friends, uh, I have uh, I think I've endorsed about five or six people for their for their CSSP because you have to have another CSSP basically go through your history, your resume, and, and endorse you. And one of the, um, I was struggling with her to find relevant experience. But then I said, well, what did you do during these years? She goes, oh, I was doing financial compliance. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Write it up, right? Compliance is, is one of the areas. So um, the links I have down here when I talk about credentials, will list the domains and then you could go see, okay, yeah, I fit in this one. Where do I maybe need to like try to pivot my career a little bit to try to get uh, relevant experience in those? All right, so thank you, good question. All right, so to Rex's point, here's the expensive one, SANS. Anyone ever hear of SANS? They have, a, anyone gonna do the purple team class that they're doing here? Anyone got in, or you got in? Awesome. So um, SANS, uh, I have a, uh, you know, I have a crush on them as you saw from the first page with all my certifications from them and I'm taking my, my graduate program with them and I have, I have met, uh, taught a class as a mentor for them. Uh, but they're expensive. Classes are five and six thousand dollars, which is why uh, employee uh, educational reimbursement is really, really good, right? If you can get it. Uh, oddly enough, at my employer, SANS is not listed as a preferred educational source, but I've been able to submit a waiver and get them approved. Uh, but not just train, not just expensive training. The other things. Uh, so this roadmap, this uh, nice little colored box down here, is our roadmap. So if you go to that link, they will show you. Here's, here's our different classes in our different fields because they have compliance and they have forensics and they have pen testing and cloud, all the different things, even a legal track. Uh, but they've got some really cool uh, free stuff. If anyone's looking for a master's program, here's the link for their uh, sans.edu. But if you go down to their security resources link, if you're a professional already working there, they have their top 20 controls, which are like, what are the top 20 things to focus on to make yourself secure, kind of like the low hanging fruit. Uh, then uh, there is also, you can get some free stuff if you go down and uh, create a portal account with them. Uh, they've got News Bytes, which is a regular newsletter of uh, things relevant to cybersecurity. Uh, if you like posters, you can get free posters. They have uh, um, trifold brochures you can download. You gotta fold them yourself, they don't come folded. But uh, on, TCP dump and Nmap and all any command that you would use in uh, in the cyber or even just IT world, they've got uh, the trifolds uh, that are a great cheat sheet, especially if you work in like a classified area where you don't have access to the internet on a regular basis. Um, so great resources there. This total eye chart, I apologize. Uh, this is uh, reference material. What I wanted to point out is, and I just realized, are we like total guys in here? Oh, how sad we don't have any women. Oh, I'm so, I'm like, I am, to, I am so sorry. I am like totally looking past you. I'm like, look, I'm scanning the room and I even spoke to you. Okay, so humiliating experience for your speaker. Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you on this slide now. Uh, were you aware of, uh, where is it? Oh, the Women's Academy, do you know about it? Okay, so the, so the, uh, I looked last night so SANS basically has academies that if you can get accepted, you get all that expensive SANS training for free. You get like four classes or so, uh, and a pretty much guaranteed job after you get out. So they've got them for veterans. They have different diversity ones, uh, but I looked last night and they are doing enrollment for 2020 now. So if you're at all interested, you already work in the security field, you said? Yeah, and so you get, basically you just excluded yourself from yeah. that. So lie in your resume. Uh, <laughs> 
But if you know anyone who's looking that this might be relevant, again, if you know any veterans, uh, uh, point them to this. So all of those programs are listed on here. Um, I've had one of my students several years ago, uh, I was at a, at a security conference, met the SANS person. They told me about the, the Women's Academy. I went over the corner, texted all my students, like, anyone interested, apply. She applied and then has just been on an incredible career path ever since. So it really can be a game changer. Uh, EC Council, uh, their big one they're known for is the CEH, Certified Ethical Hacker. Uh, they, but everyone is trying to expand their footprint, right? So like I said, ISC squared, CSSP, but they're trying to do other ones. EC Council, CEH, they're trying to expand out. One of the interesting things about EC Council, when I went and looked at their website, they're now offering bachelor's and master's degrees in cybersecurity, right? So everyone's trying to get into the game and uh, you know, I, I can neither confirm or deny the quality of their of their cybersecurity program. I don't know much about it. Um, so any, uh, so you got, so far we figured out you have your security plus, your CSSP, any others? Oh, so, okay. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're in a contest here on, uh, <laughs> yes sir. Okay, so excellent question. I literally saw on their website that they have degrees. I did not go and look at their website to see if they were accredited. I would hope if you're going to go as, you know, that they would have some, well, because like the SANS one, it took them uh, one of their problems, but they weren't accredited at first. They finally got like the Eastern so and so accreditation. So I don't know. Excellent question. Um, and I, I'll just have to direct you to the website, go look up about them. Uh, offensive security. I think you said you had one from there too. So you're just getting one from each, and like, and I'm like a total sans, bro. Yeah. Okay. Cool stuff. So uh, offensive security. One of the best ways you would know them is uh, creators of Kali Linux. Uh, that that free, uh, awesome uh, software uh, tool that, or you know, it's uh, based on the uh, Kali operating system and then the the Swiss Army knife of hacking tool. Uh, but they have a whole plethora. Hey, I use the word plethora uh, in a uh, of one. And again, you know, the uh, I think the web expert is their newest one, right? Because obviously you want to you want to be uh, confident in that. And but one of the things I like about this slide is it reinforces the point. Uh, like in my class, well, I didn't even notice Anna escape. I can't can't ridicule her anymore. Uh, I you know I I want to keep on emphasizing how many different fields there are in there. So in my class, I teach at Long Beach City College, uh, shameless plug, uh, ethical hacking and countermeasures. It's kind of an inch deep, mile wide overview of all the different fields. And I always try to, uh, I'm just, I just noticed your cool shirt. I'm like checking out what car that is. Uh, the uh, squirrel, the, uh, uh, what I like about this is it shows all the areas you can focus on. When uh, when you go to like uh, DEF CON or, or conferences like that, right? There are just people who wireless is all they do, right? At, at, at DEF CON, there's like this huge wireless village. And, you know, and then there are people who focus on, you know, do the capture the flag and the web penetration. There are so many areas for you to just like focus and this is what I'm gonna do. There are people who are just great at being uh, social engineers and, and showing companies how they can totally break into the company just by working with the people. So uh, I, I like that uh, that shows. In fact, I should add a slide for the companies that do the social engineering training. Note to self. Uh, all right, so if you are already employed, uh, the, the purpose of this slide is to encourage you to use your resources at your current career. Um, to, to steal a phrase from another presentation I saw, you may already be in, in the perfect job and you just need to basically tailor it to what you want to do. And sometimes people are able to do that. So, you know, not just your educational reimbursement program. Sometimes your employers will give you uh, uh, access to things such as lynda.com or degree.com. So go look and see what your company is giving you for free. Definitely collaborate. Uh, companies will have like an internal version of LinkedIn where you can go find uh, people who are doing something along the lines of what you want to get interest or what you want to be involved in, and you could connect to them. Um, Go find the cyber people. They're usually alone at lunchtime because the software people do not invite them, right? I know this from personal experience. I'm like, hello, anyone here? But uh, yeah, go talk to cyber people. They're nice. Uh, um, maybe if anyone was at the Dev, uh, Secure DevOps talk earlier, uh, they, you know, the, the woman speaking there was saying, 
find a volunteer from the developers that can help you with your security, right? So if you're a developer, go volunteer and tell your security person, hey, how can I uh, get more involved with, with the process? So I fill the word in there, you know, take your current position and then uh, pivot from there to do something that is more cyber related. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're just about fine. Uh, and I, even, I haven't even told you a C story yet, so. I'm still afraid of putting the water near my computer. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Um, so other training resources. So uh, LinkedIn Learning, is anyone uh, uh, formerly lynda.com? Did anyone have that? OK, so uh, the good news is, well, so it can be pricey. But uh, ever since LinkedIn acquired them, they are pretty much doing whatever they can to make it available for free. So. Uh, on the veterans page, I showed that veterans can get it for a year, but, um, well, veterans can get LinkedIn premium for a year. But um, the, so of course it's a paid subscription. Uh, a lot of libraries are offering it for free. So I have a link on the slide. It was so horrendously long. So I just have it embedded in there. So you have to download the slides to get that. Or you can just Google uh, how to access LinkedIn learning for free through public libraries. I think that was like the title of the article. Uh, but also available through your school. So uh, community colleges in California are able to, uh, I don't know if it's California or Los Angeles, someone bought a big LinkedIn learning license and is giving it to the students at the colleges. So uh, we're having the person come out in two weeks to get uh, my class set up with that. So another plug for community colleges. Uh, so I, I will tell you a very quick side story that so uh, when you remember that percent, did anyone go to a uh, community college? Let's start off with that. Anyone? Okay. So do you remember, or maybe it's still occurring today, that there was that perception? Oh, you went to a community college. What happened to you? That kind of, you know, community colleges aren't aren't good. So when I graduated college a million or high school a million years ago, uh, community colleges were like frowned upon. That was like, oh, you couldn't get into a you know finger quote real college. And I uh, I interviewed to get my Navy ROTC scholarship, and the guy looked down and nose at me and said, perhaps a cyber, uh, perhaps a community college is your best choice, right? You know, and he didn't mean that as like, you know, career building. He's like, was just looking down at me. So 28 years, successful Navy career, wherever that guy is. And then, um, you know, so now I'm teaching at uh, community college. And I said, it only took me like 30 years to get into community college. So <laughs> I'm kind of proud of that. So anyway, Cybrary, anyone ever go and visit Cybrary? So Cybrary's got some good resources. They then try to want, you know, they try to then get you to pay for stuff, right? But there's still some free resources on there. Uh, Splunk Pledge, uh, that appeared on the veterans page, but they also, uh, there are other groups that they will give the free training to. Uh, is anyone familiar with Splunk? Is that name? Okay, if, be, if so, if you're not familiar with Splunk, Splunk is a product that aggregates machine data. So anything that's connected, to a network, they will ingest their data and then uh, allow you to easily search and monitor it. So it's one of the big products out there. There are other competitors in there, but they are giving free training in there. Uh, then also, don't forget your public library, right? Ever since we you know, gave up on physical books, people forget about their libraries. But uh, again, as I said on the top, you can get LinkedIn Learning from them oftentimes. And then uh, also they uh, will have like ac a free account to Safari. So you can go get technical books for them. Uh, I direct all my students to the Long Beach Public Library to get the textbook, as I mentioned on that earlier slide, because I just don't think that book is is worth, you know, and I know a lot uh, worth, you know, a, a one semester investment. And I know a lot of my students are struggling financially. So um, I like to help them out with that. All right. So I'm the oldest one in the room. So this slide only applies to me. Uh, but just if you happen to know anyone who's maybe a little more advanced in, in their career and they're trying to make some transitions, tell them about this. There are other skills out there, but I like it. I mean, so, you know, how older workers can learn new skills and that contrasts with an article I found that the lack of uh, training for older workers is leaving them behind. And then reference that previous slide where I said new collar workers, right? You know, if someone, uh, a uh, very quick relevant example. I used to work at a company that did fingerprint systems and mugshot systems. And one of my coworkers went out to Washington, D.C. to implement their new mugshot system. And the person they gave for him to train was an older woman 
who like just stared at the computer and looked at the mouse and like had no idea how to use any kind of technology. The reason why she was the person to do that because her previous job was taking the Polaroids that came out of the camera, cutting them with scissors and taping them into a book, right? She did their mug shots previously with the camera. So now her job went away because of technology. There's a case where an employer should, okay, let's get her some basic computer training first before we throw her into the deep end and this is how you use the computerized mugshot system, right? So it's a, it's a funny story, but a little sad too if you're the woman and all of a sudden like you, there's no Polaroids for you to cut anymore. Uh, so networking, hugely important. Uh, you're already doing it because you're at ShellCon. Has anyone been to DEF CON? Oh, good number of you. B-side, any B-side? Uh, what about layer one? Okay few of you there. So again, an eye chart for where you're sitting right now, but I wanted this to be a, a great reference. So some of the things, ISSA, OWASP, they all have local chapters. Uh, Women in Society of Cyber Jitsu and Women in Cybersecurity, not just for women, right? Uh, they uh, support, you know, they welcome advocates as well of women in cyber. Uh, so Reverse Shell Corporation is the local one for our area. They are relate, they're helping run the uh, CTF here. They say, yeah, capture the flag here. So uh, they're a great group and they are meeting at Long Beach City College, shameless plug again, uh, on a monthly basis. We just had our first meeting in September. They're skipping October because of uh, ShellCon. Uh, Null Space Labs, anyone ever done anything with Null Space Labs? Nope, okay, so they're, uh, they're another LA-based hacker group. They're more uh, Burbank area. Uh, but they do monthly lock picking training. So you'll definitely, uh, two ways to get to them. You could go to their website or you could find them on uh, Meetup. Uh, lethal, has anyone ever been to a Lethal meeting? They're down in, okay, uh, they're down in uh, Costa Mesa, borderline with uh, uh, Newport Beach. And uh, they meet at Coastline Community College, which is where I used to teach. Uh, problem with Lethal, they fill up right as soon as they send out the announcement, right? So if you wanna go, uh, get yourself on the meetup on the list for announcements. And then as, <laughs> I think Peter sent out the announcements like at 2 a.m. just to like, you know, trip people up. So you show up, you don't trip people up. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so there is a good point that, you know, if you really, really want to go, uh, you could still try to sneak yourself down there, but they do fill up. Uh, and then all the conferences. Uh, so Anna just came back from Grace Hopper, right? Uh, DEF CON, we talked about B-side. Uh, I've been doing B-Side Las Vegas for the past two years. That's the week, uh, the few days before DEF CON, and that's a smaller, so bigger than ShellCon, smaller than DEF CON, and that's a really good one. Uh, of course, ShellCon, layer one. Another one to put on your radar is coming up in January is AppSec California. Uh, if Malia walked around here as part of their uh, technical track, and uh, so that would be a good one to consider next. That's gonna be at the Annenberg Beach House up in PCH, meaning really fun drive, right? <laughs> Beautiful place. I was out there for ISSA uh, earlier this year, and it's just an awesome location, but you just can't get there from here. I went oh, and it rained that day. I was on the 405 North in the rain. You know, just died a little that day. Yes? Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, there's a WESIS one uh, coming up if you want to look at that. And then they have a, a job fair next Saturday, right? Okay, so if that's of interest to you, find, uh, find Anna, find Malia, or go over to the, uh, the WESIS table right outside the door. All right, thank you, Anna. All right, so how do you currently maintain? There is like so much stuff to read, right? I, I don't know about you, but I am overwhelmed. Right? I'm driving to school on Monday night, and it's like, you pretty much just have to listen to the radio for what was the hack in the last hour that I'm gonna talk about with my students, because I talk about something from the morning that's way too old. Uh, so uh, there's uh, various sites here of uh, some good blogs and uh, just daily reading. The really cool thing that I, the reason I added this is anyone's ever worked in the DOD domain, it used to be dista.mil you would go to for all these resources, and they recently changed it to cyber.mil, right? Remember I said cyber is the, the sexy word now? Uh, it's a much more modern website, but uh, the really frustrating thing is when I'm searching for stuff that I knew was on DISA and I get the DISA link, and it just brings you to a splash page and it goes, oh, this is migrated to the cyber one and you have to go search for it on there. So that's been a little bit of frustration, but some really good resources there. Um, 
So uh, Anna, you missed this talk, uh, but we had a, so the importance of networking. When I was at DEF CON, I went to a track called Sky Talk and a police officer from, and I always get it wrong, it's either Idaho or Iowa. I am from New York and I live in California. Everything else is a big square state in between. Uh, but the guy was awesome. And basically, his, he'd been a, he started off life as a hacker. He was basically uh, getting shell, uh, using fraudulent credit cards when he was like about 10 or 11, and he got caught because he didn't know about their ability to track phone, uh, phone uh, calls because it was back in the days of modem. So, but fortunately, rather than putting him through the legal system, someone said, look, you've got some really good skills and you should put them to good. And so you follow his whole story to where he became a forensic examiner and he shows a brief story about how he helped capture a woman who had killed another woman and assumed her digital ID. All because rather than putting him in jail and punishing him, they said, you are, you are skilled and you could uh, use these for good instead of evil. And he, uh, he is basically trying to get other police officers to be like-minded. Hacking is not bad. Damaging other people's stuff and stealing their data is bad. Uh, so at the end of his presentation, he basically put up a shell and he uh, came up with some, uh, some of the bloggers, uh, some of the uh, people he follows on Twitter. Um, so if you're, not, if you're not using Twitter, set up your account. And even if you don't want to put anything out there, just start following people in the cybersecurity field. It is just a great way to get information. And then you'll see a post that's relevant of someone you're not following. It's like, oh, I like that person, I'm gonna follow him. One of my favorite Twitter accounts to follow is Internet of Shit, <laughs> right? And if, does anyone follow that one, right? And the guy just posts the latest internet connected device that didn't need to happen. This week's was, did you see the trash can? But uh, if, so going on, reading references, if you've never read The Cuckoo's Egg, has anyone read that? Okay, so mandatory reading, one of those uh, first documented hacking cases, really excellent book. I have not read this one yet, but Hackers, Heroes of the Computer Revolutions, actually early 80s book. Uh, but then we were talking about some of the great hacker movies, Sneakers, Hackers, and War Games, right? Has anyone seen the original War Games? Yeah, you gotta watch that movie, right? Would you like to play a game? So there's some, uh, some things for you to, to follow and to educate yourself. All right, so this is <clears throat> getting very close to the end. But um, so resumes. If you didn't know, you can go get your resume reviewed right out here. But that's what Raise Me is all about. But so uh, John's opinion on resumes. First, they're in art form, meaning you could have two people looking at it, and one will love it, and one will hate it, right? doesn't mean either one is right. You're gonna, if you take your resume out to three different people out there, you will get three different opinions. Um, so uh, you, of course, always have a resume ready, right? You never know when that opportunity is gonna come up and you're like, oh, I don't have my resume current. Uh, and then as, you, as your job changes, as you get new responsibilities, update that resume. Now, okay, so asterisk, John's opinion. I think you should have your resume in two different formats. I think you should have a human readable one for if you're gonna to go to a conference and you're gonna be meeting people and they need to look at it quickly, or if you're gonna to go to a small company that doesn't use a resume tracking system. But for jobs that you are applying online, uh, you need a resume that will work with an applicant tracking system. Have people heard, you know, who has heard of an applicant tracking system? And it's okay if you didn't, I'm just kind of curious. So that is the computer that is between you and the recruiter and the, and the hiring manager. And you need to get past that in order to uh, you know, advance in the, uh, in the job search. And so uh, coincidentally, uh, many years ago, I picked up my wife from work back in the 90s, and she said, 
and she was an HR professional. And she, her and I met because she's the one that did my uh, my offer letter at Hughes Aircraft in 1985. So uh, see, so you could get married too doing this. Uh, the uh, she, I picked her up from work. She said they have this computer system to scan the resumes, and no one wants to use it. And they're asking for volunteers. I said yes, yes, be the person, right? And that she to this day is still doing HRIS systems. So your resume gets scanned, scanned, put in a database. Back when I was young, it was put your resume on a quality paper and all that. No one cares about paper because they don't maintain it anymore. Uh, even if you did have paper in the first place from the scan it in. So either you're uploading it or you're sending in a paper resume and they're scanning it. Uh, the interviews are not interviewers are not going to see your original resume. That's all going to be parsed. It's going to be searched against the keywords. And the problem is when they do those keyword searches, they don't always get it right. My current job at Boeing, I first got a letter saying I was no longer under consideration for that job. I was like, oh, sad music. T too bad our, we have a student in our class who does great sound effects. And when I say sad sound, he'll, he'll like fill in, but he's not here, so <laughs> awkward silence. Um, but then I got the job. I got called back in, I got the job. And I asked my manager, hey, I got this. He goes, oh, I asked him to change the search parameters and they dropped everyone from consideration. So the people managing these systems don't necessarily know what they're doing. Um, so what I strongly, strongly recommend is go visit a website such as JobScan. Now I am picking JobScan just because it's the one I Googled uh, a few years ago in class when I wanted to go through one of them. And I did the temporary membership and I've been paying for it ever since. Uh, <laughs> so I, I keep it current because it's, it's helpful for my students. Go to JobScan. You can upload your resume. You can go put in a link to one of the jobs you're interested in, and it will compare them. And you will be shocked at how low you score. If you're like, oh, I was a perfect candidate for this job. Why didn't they call me back? Go put it in JobScan, and you will find out. And it will start telling you, here's how you improve your resume to raise this score. Now, I am not saying put in fake things. It's like, oh, I've never touched a firewall, but they're asking for firewall. I will put that in. But in my example, Plural forms of words will trip this up. Like if you put, they may say, we want you to have experience with firewalls. And you said, I have worked on Cisco Umpty Squat firewall. And it won't match. Um, they, uh, so as you, go, as you go through, you can start just online uh, tweaking the, the resume and you will watch your score come up. So uh, I really encourage you to do this. Uh, it, how many people are actively searching for jobs right now? Okay, so Rex, a few people. So um, I, I really encourage you to do this. I, I can't emphasize enough. You'll be shocked at how bad your score is. Even, even my wife, the HR professional, when she was applying for some jobs and she saw how, how bad her resume was scoring on there just because of, of terminology. Or they will say, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have a soft uh, skill section. They're like, you didn't mention leadership and this is a management position. So. Really, really uh, do recommend that you can do it for free and then you could set up an account so that it will keep your, you know, you can keep on using their free one, but then I think it doesn't re retain anything. So you could do a free one. Uh, be careful to make, make sure you cancel it because it is pricey to keep up uh, uh, the account on that. Um, and I always do this to my clicker. Really? Are you done? I don't know why my thing is that. I, I think Sparky froze. No, Sparky's still with us. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, so there's my contact information. Uh, if you wanna reach out to me uh, you know, on LinkedIn, if you connect to me on LinkedIn, just put a little note, say, hey, uh, saw your absolutely wonderful presentation at ShellCon, so I know where you're coming from. Uh, I don't post a lot of Twitter. Uh, I definitely don't do any politics, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, I am mostly about humor and cyber, or funny cyber stuff. Uh, so I think that was it. Okay. So um, I am going to put it onto, oh, wait, let you take a picture. And then I will put it on that one if you haven't got the, uh, the slides yet. And then uh, we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So very excellent question. And thank you for pointing out a deficiency in my presentation. I really should change that. Obviously the focus is on cyber, but yes. So, uh, so 
I don't know if it was on my veteran slide, but uh, uh, Amazon is actually giving free training to veterans for cloud services. Um, absolutely, Cisco certifications, um, all these vendor certifications are important because again, you remember when I said, you don't necessarily have a cyber title. If you're the switch administrator, but you don't know what you're doing and you don't administer it properly, and it turns out, you know, oh, like, hey, you set up everything as a, as a mirroring port and everyone's traffic is going every which way. So uh, yes, I think that those are, that's a very good point that vendor certifications uh, on whatever technology we're talking about are important. So good question, thank you. Anything else? Would the woman who I insulted <laughs> like to uh, like to take one more shot at me? No, we're good? Okay, we're Doctor Who fans, so we got that in common. All right, so uh, I'll be around both days if you had any more questions, but uh, go outside and warm up because I'm, like, I can't even move my hands right now. All right, thank you very much.